What's going on, everybody? We are back with another installment of Prime Conversations, and I am here with a talented music musician up on the rise. I got Trace Austin, and what's going on? What's up, everybody? Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Man, I actually am very happy to have you on. Like, you know, I know you've been doing interviews here and there, but I don't think you're going to do an interview quite like this. I mean, you know, just regular kickback talking and um we do tell stories but i want to know a story about you uh do you have any stories for the pnb you can tell any story you want Ooh, i got a couple i got quite a few um i'm gonna say a pretty interesting story that happened to me um recording music i went to the studio one time and uh that was when i first was recording recorded one of my songs, Mosh, which is on my EP, Canary Wharf. So I recorded the song. I was in the booth with the engineer. And this guy came in, and I thought he was with the engineer. So I was like, all right, it's chill, it's chill. So he comes in. He's kind of bopping his head, but he seems kind of faded. So I'm, like, laughing. I'm like, whoa, he's with you, but he seems just out of it. So I'm like, what's he doing? So he's on the couch, and he's just kind of bopping his head, and I'm in the booth recording. So come to find out, it was some stranger that just kind of broke into the studio. So oh. I was like, oh. damn. Like, it was just something that was so wild and so random. I, at first, I was kind of like, dang, why this have to happen? Because I had to leave early. But I look back on it, and I was like, man, that was something to show me. Anything can happen. That is actually pretty funny. But, I mean, at least he ain't do no harm. He was just like, I'm going to sleep. So Yeah, that's true. We just... Went on the couch and knocked right out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was that in LA. Yeah, that was in LA. Oh, was of course. LA. Okay. Yeah. Hollywood. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're like I said, up on the rise, and I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I went back and I saw your video when you were really young. Uh, yeah. I don't even know how how old you was, but you were very very young, and you weren't you weren't Trace Austin yet, were you? Yeah, I wasn't really Trace Austin yet because I was like it was still kind of like the kiddish stage. So that was when I was like ten, and I was just like kind of doing it for fun. So I had my friends with me. We had these like one dollar bills. We're trying to flex, you know, trying to put the drip on, trying to put the suits on. So that was kind of like a kiddish thing. Um, it was a good video, though, really good. Um, at that point, I was recording um, in studios, recording professionally, but it just wasn't at a level where I was trying to pursue it. I was just kind of doing it for fun, filming music videos for fun. Um, but I definitely wasn't Trace Austin at that time. Because that video, everybody goes back and laughs on that video. They're like, man, you went from that to where you are right now. Like, it's just funny to just to see the growth, especially uh, people who've known me for a long time. Just to see the growth of that is pretty dope. That video reminds me, like, the way that you were having fun and just going around playing your instrument. It reminds me of this group, and you probably never heard of it. It's called <laughs> the Naked Brothers Band. Um, Brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from then to now, we're going to jump back and forth. But I seen your video for uh, Back Home, and I was like, okay. I like the vibe, but uh, what did you just randomly say, hey, let's do a music video in this style or like what you inspired by a show or a movie or something? So when I like because I recorded that song just a few months ago, um, I recorded it with one of my friends. And um, I think like the vibe of that song, because I talked to the director and he came up with something. He was like, yo, it's about a girl. And it's about like she's been away for too long. She's been running the streets like uh it was just something kind of like a stalkish vibe. So when I was thinking of the video, I was like, man, it probably should be a girl that's kind of obsessed, like an obsessed girl. So he like kind of took that idea and put it into something extreme. And when he put out the storyboard, I was like, oh, that's pretty dope. But like filming the video was like totally different. It was like the experience was just crazy to seeing the visuals, being in the chair tied up, um, getting slapped around um running down the street all that was just like something that you don't really see anybody else doing so that's kind of what i was going for something 
abstract, but not too out of the norm. Now, I know, obviously, this is a video and all that, but when, when the white van pulled up, I was like, no, he's going to fall for this out of everything, the white van? Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> like, it's a good it's a good story. Like, I, I like music videos that tell stories, so that was actually, I like, oh, come on, I keep doing good. Yep, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, you actually got to work with somebody I admire a lot in uh, Teddy Rowley, and... Uh, how was that? Like, I know you probably didn't know who he was. I mean, that happens nowadays. Uh, not not a you thing, but you know, like Teddy does a lot behind the scenes to where people be like, "Oh, he was he did this and he did that." So, can you just tell me the experience of meeting Teddy Riley or even finding out who he was? So that experience, to be honest, was pretty crazy. I was twelve at the time. And um, it was actually from my uncle, Benjamin Wright. So I went to his house and uh, I had the song called Days um, with this other artist, Love Mansui. Uh, he's a pretty established artist. So I did the song with him. Uh, we were up all night writing lyrics. And I remember the next day we went to the studio and uh, we got in, they put the track in and Teddy Riley walked in. But at the time, I didn't really know who he was. So I didn't understand everybody was like oh like what's up what to this guy i don't know who this guy is I don't know. <laughs> yeah i was just kind of like chill i was like oh i was like hey nice to meet you and this and this but now that i look back on it i was like wow that was really like a blessing like a opportunity that not that many people get so working was just the feel of it it was like organic it was real um everything was flowing uh i went to the studio did a couple takes um, and at first I was having trouble with it and he guided me through it. He's like, do this with it and do this. And then when he mixed it, he kind of put like that, ee, ee, like he kind of put like okay. a little kind of, light, um, put a little, little spice on it. little spice on it. Yeah. So he kind of changed it around and he kind of made it into what we were all looking for. So, uh, he just kind of guided me through. He was like, nah, do it like this, do it like this. So we finished writing the song. We knocked it out. He mixed it. Um, and it was just, yeah, I look back on it. It was just an experience that I've never had before. Not even today. So uh, probably my last Teddy question. Um, what track did you find out that he did that you were surprised that he did? Hmm. There was a couple of them. I would say Jam. Jam. Oh, okay. Uh, him and um, so it was Teddy Riley, Jimmy Jam. Um, I was pretty surprised by that um, because I hear it all the time. I hear it on the radio, and it doesn't really dawn on me like, oh, this is Teddy Riley until my parents had to tell me like, yo, that's Teddy Riley, the guy who you work with. I'm like, yo, that's tight. That's just crazy. So when I hear him songs he does, I'm just kind of like especially like how famous they are. I'm just kind of like, wow, he was doing those type of songs mm -hmm. and I didn't even know at the time. Yeah, man, this, yeah, Teddy, look, I can talk about Teddy all day, but this is, to talk about you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> look, don't, this is my favorite genre, New Jack Swing, and yeah, but uh, I got a question for you since you perform and all this. What type of performer do you like to animate when you're on stage? What type of performer? That's I know you want to be you, but like, who do you like? I want to take this from this person. I want to take that from that person. Who do you like? Try to, you know, take your take your stuff from, and make it your own. So I would say try to take my stuff from and make it my own. I kind of mix like old school with uh, new school. Um, I like some old rappers, older rappers like DMX. Um, I like some. Hey, you made me feel old for a second. I'm not even that old. Wait a minute. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I do like right. DMX. Um, I do like some, I like a lot of new school rappers. Like when I'm performing, I kind of go for like a Travis Scott style. I kind of, um, that kind of just like hype, just get the crowd going and uh, just kind of put it on a show. Because when he does it, he just, his graphics and everything. So I kind of go for something like that. Um, before the pandemic, I was, opening for all these people um, performing different venues and I would just do it kind of a hype vibe. I would get the crowd going first 
and then that's when I would get into the song. Um, I would interact with people. So I think uh, just the mix of new school and old school uh, really kind of represents like my performance style. Okay. So when you get the crowd involved, do you like to do like uh, back and forth call in action or you just kind of just like to get them hyped? Like I like to get them hyped, but I do like to do the back and forth for sure. I like to do the back and forth. Um, sometimes a little bit of jumping. I'm not anything too crazy, but things like those subliminal things, I'll get the crowd like, oh, dang, he's good. Let's get into it. And um, especially like it depends on like the vibe of the song, if they feel the song. So yeah. I'm doing yeah. more of a chill song. I'm going to be like just kind of bouncing a little bit, but uh, just laid back. But if I do a hype song, then I'm going to just go back and forth and then I'm going to get pretty much as hype as I can. Okay. Um, do you ever like go back and watch different performances? Like I am a performance kind of sore. Uh, so do you ever go back and watch different performances of like, not, I, I say nineties, nineties performances. Do you ever go back and watch different groups or different people just perform? So I've watched different people perform, um, especially I like, uh, nineties too, because I see a lot of new school, but, um, to understand the art of it, I kind of have to go back to the older school because they really kind of paved the way. Yeah, they really paved the way. So I need to have like a mix of that to see how they perform, how it's changed. So sometimes I watch artists like Michael Jackson. Um, I watch a lot of old artists perform, uh, but just the style of it and how it's changed over time is kind of crazy. You watch any Bobby Brown? Bobby Brown. Um, yeah, I've watched a little bit of Bobby Brown. Yeah, I have watched a little bit of Bobby Brown. Okay, okay. Hey, why don't hey? Look, you're, you're good with me. You're watching Bobby and talking about Teddy. This is, this is going great. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I I asked the Bobby Brown question because I I want to ask you this question. And if you don't know about it, you might have to at least either go see it or go watch the performance. Have you ever heard of this fictional character called Paralyzed? Paralyzed. No, I don't think I have. No. <laughs> Okay. All right. Paralon is a fictional character from a goofy movie. And he is Michael Jackson, Bobby Brown, and Prince mixed up into one in their universe. And he is like, when I say my my personal opinion, one of the best fictional characters, he just is. He was just, everything about him is just cool songs. And I don't know. People dress up like him for Halloween. It's just something about him. You got the energy, you got the moves, even though it's fictional. It's just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. So it's, it's a different element. That's wild. Yeah, I'm going to have to go watch that. That's crazy. So I want to talk about just the different decree of songs that you have. Mm -hmm. I know you do have different stuff. You've been putting stuff out, you know, up until, you know, pandemic and stuff. You're going to put out more. What is your vibe in a studio like? Like, are you just in a studio nervous before you about to go on your mic? Are you in studio recite your lines before you go on the mic? Like, how, how are you with that? So my vibe in the studio, to be honest, I'm pretty, like, open. I'm not, like, too nervous when going into the studio. Um, I might be nervous at first when I uh, walk in because I'll be like, well, how should I do this? How should I do that? Uh, how should the pitch be? How should my flow be? And sometimes the engineer will tell me that for the most part. Um, and even somebody I'm working with right now, which is, uh, which, who was guiding me through that. He was like, do this line like this, do that line like that. And that's what really made the song into what it was. So, um, okay. I think for the most part, my vibe is just going in the studio and doing my version, just like knocking it out. And then the engineer kind of tweaking it and, uh, telling me what to do differently. Okay. I mean... I'm liking all this. I'm liking all this stuff because it's like, I don't know why when I'm talking to you, you talking about music, it's just like it's bursting out different flavors of music. Like I, I, I'm hearing the new Jack Swing, and I'm hearing like the soft spoken, like mellow uh, ballad. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of. I'm like just getting a lot of vibes. So I just had to say that I, I do get a lot of vibes, and 
I want to ask your favorite, but what sound is your favorite sound? What sound? Oh, just music, just in general. Just in general? It doesn't have to be old school or new school? Nah, just what's your favorite sound? Um, I would say my favorite sound is kind of melodic. So kind of like a melodic flow, because I'm not that strong of a singer, but um, I've done songs where it's like rapping fast or something hard. But I would say that melodic is something that I can really vibe to. I'm even back home. Back home was something that I was forced. It came out. Actually, I do rap a lot, but I also try to veer into singing. So is that kind of similar to like Lil Nas X? Maybe he might not have thought he was a singer, but then he sings the chorus on Old Town Road and everybody likes it. Is it something like that? Yeah, similar? something like that. Uh, pretty similar. Um, and even uh, something like with uh, Travis Scott, because he's not uh, like mm. that's kind of melodic yeah. stuff. Like he'll do hard songs, but then he'll switch it up and do melodic. And then um, also a new artist that's really good is Don Tolliver. Uh, he does some melodic uh, mm. things, okay. so he's pretty good with that. So, I mean, a lot of people like do everything other than singing. I know you like to play the drums and play instruments. What are you, are you, you got three talents. What do you make up of your three talents? Who do I make up of my three talents? Uh, you, can, you, can, you can even make these up and say, this is what I want to do. Like you can say, I want to, uh, I don't know. I want to sing low. I want to sing deep baritone or something, you know, yeah. just something that you, the three talents that you just want. Um, I would say to get really good on the drums. I'm to definitely learn how to sing uh, different pitches and mm -hmm. get my delivery, my delivery right when I'm like in the mic and the flow, just pronunciating my word, which okay. some of I already do, but just getting better at it. So it's crystal clear. It's something um, yeah. I definitely want to do. And even like with some artists I admire, like Pharrell, um, I like Kay Trinata, um, who else? Kid Cudi. So those are all artists that uh, have sounds that kind of influence my songs. So. Okay. I only ask that question because I know like a lot of people they can do this and they can do that. They'd be like, maybe if I do this, I could be like a triple threat. I could be a this or a. so. I like to know what people like to like to shoot to. Right, that's that's good though. Yeah. You know, and you know, uh, do you so when you play you play your songs on the drums or you like to go back and play whatever or you just like to feel the vibe? Um, actually, that's funny because I actually just played a song of mine today on the drums. I'm an upcoming song. Um, usually I'll play like some uh, songs by like different artists. Like I played uh, Lenny Kravitz, Are You Gonna Go My Way? Oh, played okay. Anna Pack, uh, Come Down. So um, I think I played like a variety of songs on the drums, old school, new school, um, just to get like a vibe of something, just in case I ever want to do a cover of something and like release it out there. I like, I'm pretty good at it. Oh. And you start doing covers. I might, I yeah. it might have to be like a full album right there, like just bought. Uh, <laughs> just uh, uh, so I got like a couple more questions, and and this question I'm about to ask is another performance question because I really do enjoy live performances. Would you? I what you got to hear this over. Have you ever heard of Jungle Love by Morris Day? In the time. Jungle Love. I don't think I've heard of Jungle Love. Uh, it's, it's a Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, Morris Day. It's a group that Prince um, pretty much founded. But the, the live performance version of that song is just so, so much going on. It's something that I personally, it's just interesting. It's like the bass, you know, the guitar guy's a good solo. The drums just... That is the type of song that 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 if you do a cover on that, I'm telling you, I am paying like I'm 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 paying a lot. Um, yeah, yeah I'm I'm just saying like that's probably my favorite live performance song. Um, and last thing I 
I gotta bring this up. It's not bad. I'm just saying, you know, I gotta bring this up because I know you're probably tired of talking about this. We gotta talk about your your grandfather, um, Otis Williams, and you know, a lot of people probably tell you how much they're influenced by him and everything. But to you, he's just granddad. Uh, I don't want to be cliche and say, when did you know he was the man? But when did you know uh, he was like? When did you know, or at least the first inkling to where you was like, hmm, they actually want to talk to, to a granddad or whatever you call him? They actually yeah. want to talk to him? What? So, I mean, from an early age, um, I was, like, told um, about it. But I think as I got older, um, when I went out to a show, he brought me on stage. And that's when I saw, I was like, that's crazy. It's just, like, a thousand people in the crowd, like, clapping for him. Um, people like cheering and I was like, wow, that's crazy just to see everybody, uh, go crazy over him because at the time he was just like granddad. But then, um, I started like to understand more and more the kind of influence he had. Yeah. I mean, come on now. It's generation, generational influence. But yeah, I mean, just one more thing, one more, uh, story about, not story, one more thing about your granddad is the the movie of course your first time seeing it i just want to know your initial thoughts whenever you was old enough to watch it whenever you got introduced to it so um i would say when i saw the movie that was something also that made me realize like wow they did a movie on him that means he's really influential and made me realize like how much of an impact he had and even when i saw the play he had um about 2 years ago just the play yeah. was amazing. Just vibe and everything. It told his whole story. Even stuff I didn't know about. Some stuff my mom didn't know about. So mm. it told his whole story of certain stuff that I didn't know about. And it made me realize like how big he actually was. That's when I was kind of like, wow, like this is pretty dope. Okay. Okay. Uh we do I mean we might have to break on this power line thing. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm just saying, greatest fictional character of all time. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, we we're gonna move on. You got, I got like one or two more questions. These are not particularly questions about music or anything. These are just life questions. All right. When you're 16, well, wait, you are 16, right? Let me let me be sure. Be correct. Yeah, I'm 16. Okay. Yep. All right. About to turn. When you're, Okay, cool. So when you're 16 and you're doing these interviews, do people look at you different because you're 16? Um, that's a good question. I think even when I when I've been doing interviews and performances, people have kind of looked at me as like, "Oh yeah, your little bro, your little bro." Um, so I think people have definitely looked at me as that. But then other people have seen like, "Wow, he has." potential you know um he's talented and other people have like saw the good stuff instead of like kind of pointing out like oh yeah keep working you'll get there keep working um kind of like dismissing me a little bit so i think that's something awesome but uh can you let everybody know where they can find you so you can find me on spotify um youtube instagram uh Instagram is the Trace Austin. Spotify is Trace Austin. Same with YouTube. You can find my music videos, my posts, uh, what I'm about to do, um, and my songs. Um, basically everything. Okay. Do you ever go live or anything? Um. Yes. Yeah, so, sometimes I'll go live. Um. Uh, maybe like once every two weeks. Um, okay. Just to fill everybody in on um what's going on and things like that. So. Okay. And, uh, I mean, we don't have to, we're going to end this soon. So I'm going to ask you, how do you want to take us out? Hmm. I want to take you guys out by saying, um, thank you for having me for sure. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I have, a couple big things coming up so definitely keep tuned for that um i have some new projects coming up too uh probably one of my best in my opinion 
Um, it just shows like how much I've progressed and it's kind of a different sound. Like I have a few songs coming out that's doesn't even sound like me. It's just a total different sound of like being modern and uh, very similar to what's on the radio today. So I would say definitely uh, keep on close watch for that. Okay. Okay. I like it, man. Look, we got Trace Austin. This man is just on the rise. And I tell y'all, y'all got to remember, y'all got to remember uh, this man is on to do bigger and better things. I'm a believer. Y'all got to trust it. I'm Prime. This is Trace and we out.